is going on guys welcome to the wiring video for the manual swap series now I won't lie this one's a little bit of a long one that being said we do cover every aspect of wiring and the multiple routes you can take so the description of this video is going to be your friend I have all of the sections of the video split up into different time slots I know some of you guys who are new to wiring, you might not be wiring a clutch switch. Uh, right after this, I have a crash course on basic wiring, basically just how to connect two wires and all that good stuff. So that's basically all we're going to be doing. I have it split up, so we go over the crash course on wiring, the tools we will be using, prepping the reverse slide harness, installing the reverse slide harness, prepping the clutch switch harness, and installing the clutch switch harness, and then the very last thing we do is for you guys who are not installing a clutch switch but still want your manual swap to work, we go over basically how to connect those uh, 5 and 7 to make it work properly. So use this video as you guys need to. You don't have to sit through the entire thing. We basically go over all of the routes you can take as for wiring the swap. So in the description is going to be your best friend. Along with that, for you guys on mobile, the pinned comment is going to be the time card split up as well. So use this video as you guys need to. I know some of you guys who are pretty good at wiring, all you need is some direction. So that's all in there. And for those of you guys who are brand new, it's really not that difficult to sort of figure out the basics of what we need to do and then go from there. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy wiring. All right, so real quickly, we're going to go over some basic wiring. So this is for you guys who have really never done any wiring before. We're just going to go and run down the basics, basically. So we're going to be sort of extending the wires on uh, the harnesses, the reverse light harness and the clutch switch harness, if you guys are going to be running a clutch switch. And basically when I'm extending the wires or when I'm tying the wires in from the actual automatic transmission harness and attaching it to the wiring harness, this is basically what we're going to be doing. And I'm going to be showing you guys basically how to connect the wires if you're not running heat shrink and you're not soldering it. So basically here we have two wires. So we can pretend that this one is the wire from the reverse light harness and this is an extension wire. So we're going to be extending the wire or this can be the end of the reverse light harness and this can be like pin number two and we're going to be connecting the harnesses and basically making it work. So in the video I use some wiring specialty tools. I'm going to be showing you guys how to uh, cut the wires in if you don't have those specialty tools. So we're going to be using a, a razor blade here and the first thing we're going to do is strip the ends of the wire off. So I use a set of wire strippers but we're going to use a razor blade here. So I'm going to sort of cut maybe I'll say maybe half an inch. So we're going to go in it and we're going to sort of dig into the rubber there. You see that? And we're going to dig in and sort of pull it back. And you can see it sort of strips the rubber away from it. I got a little bit of wire on there. So we're going to do that sort of all the way around. And eventually the rubber won't even be attached anymore. So from there we can just pull that guy out. And you can see it leaves a nice little strand of wire. So we're going to do that to both. And try not to dig into it too much because you might actually cut the wire try and just shave the rubber there we go now we can pull that guy out like that and if this is your first time wiring I would advise that you practice this on a couple of just spare wires before you actually start cutting into the uh, the car and so now we're gonna attach them so basically we have our two little uh, ends of wire here and we're gonna sort of cross them in the middle sort of like that so you see how they're both touching in the middle of the silver there and then we're going to twist the wire around each other so if you twist it like that you'll end up with something like that so the wires are sort of intertwined around each other to give you guys a better idea of what that is um, here I have a belt and here I have a different belt so we're gonna pretend that these are the two ends of the wires so here's one wire here's the other wire we're gonna cross them in the middle and just like twist them like that Right, and so that's basically what we're doing with those wires and so that's basically what you end up with is just two wires twisted around each other so for those of you guys who are soldering it and heat wrapping it this is where you would solder you'd put the soldering gun there and solder some uh, solder on there and then you would slide heat shrink over it and then heat shrink that with a lighter but for those of you guys who aren't uh, soldering and heat shrinking we're just going to take some electrical tape here and get a nice little piece like that and we're going to put some on one end and we're basically just going to wrap it around the connection and sort of press it in and this uh, this electrical tape is basically going to 
tape the two wires together and hold it into place. So there we go. Now that guy is all taped together. Now these guys aren't going to come apart. Now another thing we do is we sort of wrap the wiring harness in electrical tape to protect it, right? So here I have two of those guys that are soldered together. So this is sort of going to be like one of these is going to be, this is like, pretend this is terminal two for the reverse light. And then this is the harness. And then here is terminal three. And then this is the other end of the reverse light harness. So the reverse light switch would be right over here. After I heat shrink and solder these guys, I'll put another piece of heat shrink here to sort of protect it. But if you don't have that, we're gonna wrap it in some more electrical tape. And this is sort of also how I prep the harness. After I solder these guys together and put another piece of heat shrink, I wrap it in electrical tape to sort of protect it. So we're gonna put some electrical tape around it like that. And then we are just gonna wrap basically both of these wires together. And I'm gonna wrap it around both of those connections. Sort of like that. And so what you'll end up with is basically sort of like a harness like that and you just run it all the way through on both ends to sort of protect the wires and that's that's basically all we're doing here we do this uh, to extend the reverse light harness we do this when we plug in the reverse light harness to the actual automatic transmission harness and this is basically all we're doing is we're just connecting wires like this to make it all work so if you guys are new to wiring and this is your first time doing wiring I would highly suggest going out and picking up a roll of wire like this I think this guy was like two dollars and this is 22 gauge uh, stranded copper wire right there I would just suggest going out and getting some wire and then cutting some little lengths off and just practicing making connections like this to get it down because if you go in there and you mess something up if you're not comfortable with doing this you know basically just get some more practice in before you go and actually work on your car like this the more you do it the better you're going to get and the easier it's going to be so it's not super difficult but it just takes some practice to get to get decent at it so just go out there get some spare wire practice with it and then when you're comfortable with it then start working on your car tools we will be using so we did use a handful of tools uh, to wire the uh, reverse lights and clutch switch. That being said, I am going to go over uh, the tools that I used and some tools you could use as replacements. So I did go over and use a couple of wiring like specialty tools that normally if you don't do any wiring you won't really have. So because of that I'm going to put the tools I used and then I'm going to put sort of some substitute tools out here that you guys can use instead of going out and buying a full toolkit with some of the stuff that I did use. So we'll go over that in a second. So a pair of wire strippers, so that is for cutting the ends of the wires off so we can get a good connection. If you don't want to go out and get a set of those, you could use a razor to sort of strip the end of the wire off. I'll go into that in a little bit. I used a set of wire cutters and I got some extra 22 gauge wire because the clutch wiring, we do need to extend the wiring on that as well as the reverse lights. I did extend it a little bit and I used some wire to do that. I used a solder gun, some rosin core solder, and a box of heat shrink. In addition to that, I used a lighter to heat shrink the heat shrink basically. So this is sort of going into the specialty section of wiring. I like to solder my wires just to give them a more solid connection and give them a more longevity, a better chance of surviving a longer time. You don't necessarily have to solder these together just because I did. You could wrap it really well and then just throw some electrical tape on the connection to get it all nice and tidied up. You don't necessarily have to solder the whole thing. I did because that's the way I like to do it. So it does require a little bit extra tools and some more time to get it all nice and soldered. But you could just straight up wrap the wires and then wrap it with uh, electrical tape. I did that on my first swap and the car still, well it doesn't really run and drive because it doesn't have a motor. but. I never had any wiring issues and I drove it for three years like that and it worked perfectly fine. Now if you're going to be wiring a clutch switch, you will need a flathead screwdriver. I have a quarter inch ratchet with an extension and a 10 millimeter on there. That is to get the lower trim piece off as well as that aluminum bracket plate on the bottom there to actually access spot where you have to put the plug in along with a hot glue gun. So the clutch switch we're using is actually a modified brake switch. So the brake switch, the actual switch portion of it, the part that pushes up and down needs to be extended by a couple millimeters or whatever 
just to ensure that the clutch pedal will actually push on the brake switch. I'll go over that a little bit more. But I did use that hot glue gun to glue some plastic on the end of the switch just to extend it by maybe half an inch or whatever to ensure that the clutch switch would actually do its job. So we did use that. If you're not installing a clutch switch, you don't have to worry about the rest of that stuff. The reverse light's pretty fairly simple. You could get away with just using the wire cutters, the razor, and the electrical tape to get that all wired in. Along with, uh, you might need some extension wire. I picked that uh, 22 gauge up at Fry's. I think it was only like a dollar or two. So you could get away with doing the wiring for a lot less tools than this, but this is the way I like to do it, so this is how I did it. So basically here we have that uh, connector, and so here we have the wire, and we're basically just going to take that guy and push him through and in, and he should click. There we go. Yeah, so that's that's basically it at this point, because there's only two connections on there. So both the wires are in, and just to prevent it from uh, getting caught on anything, I'm going to wrap both the wires in some electrical tape just to give it a little bit more protection so we're just going to do a nice clean little wrap on these and I'm going to leave a little bit of room to play on the wires just so I have some extra slack when I'm splicing these guys in and we're going to splice this guy in. So this guy actually I was surprised the wires that they uh, gave me actually weren't even long enough so they reached up through the shifter but they weren't long enough to get to the actual connection so I picked up some uh, 22 gauge wire and we're basically just gonna splice these guys in I might run a couple more inches on and then we're gonna splice this guy into the harness later so we're just gonna prep this guy for now So I got some strippers here and we're gonna strip these guys now if you don't have a wire stripper like that you can take a razor and just sort of go around the wire like that and just sort of cut the rubber around it and then pull that end off and those guys will be good so I'm cutting a little bit off so we're gonna run that out so on this wire I'm maybe gonna cut maybe about that long just to extend it so that guy is that's 11 inches so that's almost a foot so that should be enough so we'll just take another length there we go. And then so that's just so we have uh, more room to play with with our wires. So we'll strip that guy. And that guy. So so I got a nice length of a uh, shrink wrap I'm going to be using. So I'm going to slide that guy over the ends. Now you don't necessarily have to heat shrink it. I'm going to be soldering mine and heat shrinking it just for a uh, longevity, but if you don't have either of those, when you wrap them, like that, so we're just going to wrap the wires around, and if you don't have heat shrink or anything like that, once you wrap it like that, so it sort of hangs out, so you can then wrap that around in electrical tape, get both of those wrapped up so they don't connect, and then basically run electrical tape all the way up, and so we're basically just extending this wire. Um, I'm going to be running some heat shrink on it after I solder it. If you don't have that option to heat shrink it and solder it, just wrap it like that a bunch of times and then throw some electrical tape on there and that should do the trick. Get him all soldered. I'm going to slide some heat shrink over. That's and we're going to shrink wrap that. There we go. Now we're just going to do that to both sides. Alright. And I got a bigger heat shrink that I'm going to run on both of them. And so that basically extends the uh, the length, so we can run our reverse lights a little bit more slack. And I'm going to wrap the rest of it in electrical tape. That should do it. And then our reverse light, 
wire harness is basically good to go, and then we're going to go throw this in the car in a minute. So now we're going to figure out uh, what two terminals actually work the reverse lights. So we're going to be testing the reverse lights initially before we start actually splicing and uh, wiring everything up. So we're going to be testing everything as we go. So I want to confirm that those are the two pins, so I'm going to put those in. I'm going to run the reverse light harness down into the transmission, plug it in, and then plug those two guys in there to make sure that that switch is working. And basically the same thing we're going to do uh, for this guy, the clutch switch. So we're going to put the two pins in here, actually test the switch to see if it works, and then we're going to run the wires in, put it in the clutch assembly where the actual pedal pushes on it, with those guys in here and make sure that it works. And then once we've confirmed that all of that works, then we're going to wire in and actually do all the soldering and all that stuff. So that's just to make sure you don't run the wires plug it in, solder it up, and then it doesn't work. You see what I mean? So we're basically going to be foolproofing it so we don't do all of this wiring work just to have it not work and then you guys have to figure something else out. You know what I mean? And I do recommend that you guys do this on your own car in addition to me doing it on mine. Because I don't know, maybe that brake light switch that I wired the clutch switch to, maybe it doesn't work. I'm not going to know that until, well, until I plug it in and make sure that it works. So for this, uh, I believe it is pin 2 and 3 on the OBD2 cars for the reverse lights. So we're going to jump those two guys. I have another little wire here, just like that one. We're going to plug 1 into 2 and 1 into 3. So now it's jumping those two together, allowing current to flow, and that should get the reverse lights on. So I'm going to turn the key on. Our reverse light is lit, so those are the two guys. So I'm going to go pull that wire out and see if this stays on. It shouldn't. And the reverse light is out, look at that. Okay, so now we're gonna go run the actual light switch down, plug it into the transmission, and then basically splice those two in. So basically we're gonna run that harness down, plug it in to the actual harness there, and see if it works. All right, so let's strip some wires off. There we go. And I'm gonna tape the end of the wire to the shifter so the entire thing doesn't drop through when I'm trying to feed it. And we're going to take our harness and we're going to drop him down there. And we're going to feed a little bit. And we do need to get under the car, so I'm going to be jacking mine up. Uh, if your car is still on stands when you're doing this, I guess you don't really have to jack it up. So underneath the car, there's that little reverse light that we uh, fed through. So I'm going to take him, I'm going to feed him over the cross member. I'm going to pull him through. And that connector right there, right above the fill hole for the transmission, is the reverse light switch. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy into him. There we go. So now that he's plugged in, we can take our wires and we can do what we did with that little jumper wire. So I'm going to plug one of them in on number two and the other one on three and so now when I put the key in we're gonna put the transmission into reverse and the light should come on Going into reverse. all right we have reverse lights so we're gonna unplug those guys we're gonna flip it over so that is pin two and that is pin three. And separate those from the crowd. So those are our two reverse light wires. I'm gonna splice those guys and we'll do the other one. So now our reverse wires are basically just gonna tie in on those. So I am gonna solder mine. Again, if you're not gonna solder yours, you can just wrap them around like that and then put some electrical tape around it to keep them nice and nice and organized. But I'm going to be using the heat shrink and solder combo. Now, in addition to that, I am going to be running these reverse wires through the hole in the shift gate here, and I don't want it pinched between uh, this rubber boot and the actual frame of the car because I'm afraid that might actually cut it and make it stop working. So I'm going to poke a little hole and then run the wire through this rubber guy and then solder it in. Basically it's going to prevent the wire from being sandwiched between this and the frame of the car and possibly cut it. Cut a little hole on the back side. And then I'm going to bend that and feed it through. 
There we go. And now let's get this guy on. And this guy can be a little bit of a trick. So I find if you like take this and sort of roll it down in on itself, it'll go on a lot easier. You see what I mean? And then when it gets to the bottom, just unroll them like that. This should be good. We're gonna pull our wire through. And uh, this inner edge right here, so that sits underneath the frame, and then this will sit on top. So the metal on the shifter sort of sits around like here. And so we're gonna feed him in. Now, I'm gonna get all of the wires out from underneath him, because they do sort of like to stack up underneath when you're putting them on. So we're gonna get all of them out. And I'm gonna start feeding one edge under, and we're just gonna go all the way around. And then, there we go. So that's in place. We got our reverse wire through, and now we can start soldering these guys in. Now one thing to note, um, I know this might be a question, uh, which one goes with which? Well, uh, because it's just a little switch, uh, it's going to let current flow either way, so it really doesn't matter. So I could go this one and that one, or I could go that one and that one. So just to avoid any future confusion, it doesn't matter which one goes with which. So just make sure that these guys are the right wires to be in, your reverse lights work, and then we can just wire either one, and it's going to work perfectly. Let's get these all tidied up. Let's get some heat shrink over those. Like that. I'll get some little heat shrink on each. Let's get this guy nice and crossed. Get a good mechanical connection. Nice and soldered. Slide our heat shrink up over that. All right. <clears throat> now we'll go after the second guy. There we go. Slide that heat shrink over. Get you all nice and shrunk. And then we'll slide our big guy over. There we go. We have reverse lights. Now, as for a clutch switch, I'm going to be using a uh, brake switch. So we're going to use the uh, brake light switch trick. And so basically, it's got four connectors on the back. Here's an old harness from it. And so we're basically just going to be using two of them. So I'm going to run it off of these two guys here. So these guys we're not really going to worry too much about. And basically, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to run a lot longer of a wire because this guy sits up on the clutch pedal and so we're going to run this all the way to the center console so i'm going to take about three and a half feet of this 22 gauge wire and run it all the way up and so once this is done we're going to feed this and then we're going to feed the wire up sort of through the footwell through the dash up into that center console where we have to wire them in so let's cut about three feet that's about three and a half feet i'm going to cut it a little bit longer than it needs to be just so we have some room to play with the wires so we're not stretching it. For this, we're only gonna need two of them. So either use the upper two or the bottom two. So they both basically do the same thing. So this switch, when it's down like that, it opens the connection and when it's out, it'll close the connection. So basically, when this guy is up, it's gonna flow current through and when it's down, it's not. So basically that's gonna work out to be when the clutch pedal is out it's going to be pushing on it and so you're not going to be able to start the car until you push the clutch pedal in it'll open that guy up and then it'll allow current to flow and then that's basically how our clutch switch is going to work so we're going to strip those guys we're going to strip our other wires and we're going to do the same thing and i'm going to heat shrink that guy all right Get some heat shrink on that guy. I'm going to throw a bigger heat shrink over that. There we go. Now I'm going to strip the ends of these guys now. And I'm going to plug in the brake switch. And I'm going to be using a voltmeter. And I'm basically just going to confirm 
So I have him set on resistance. And so we're just gonna sort of confirm that the, uh, the wiring in the switch does work. So I should have low resistance. And when I clip that, it should be infinite, yep. Okay, so you see that? So when it's on, it has almost no resistance to it. And when I close it, it has one, which basically means that it's it's an open connection. So if I take these guys, they're open, it's one, so there's basically infinite resistance. And I'll tap them together, and it goes basically down to zero. So we're gonna do the same thing with the, uh, the switch here. When the switch is up like it is now, it should have uh, no or little resistance on it. So that's showing about zero. And then I'm gonna push it down, and it should basically stop the connection yep so that works so our wires work and you guys you should test it because you don't know if the switch works or not or if the wires work I would try and test it but if you don't have a voltmeter you know you kinda really can't so if it doesn't work it worked when you jumped it jumped the terminals then I would start looking into that stuff so this guy works I'm not gonna be using these so I'm gonna clip them and then I'm basically going to wrap this entire thing in electrical tape just to sort of help protect the wires. Also, from what I understand, so let's think about this. So the terminals that we're jumping are for basically the neutral safety switch, from what I understand. I could be totally wrong in this. This is just sort of my theory. I'm just going to talk it out with you guys while I wrap this. The switch that we're jumping terminals on is uh, the neutral safety switch. So when the car is automatic, you can start it in park and you can start it in neutral, right? Uh, you cannot start it in drive reverse or any of the lower gears right when it's in drive or in reverse that little connection that we jumped is open meaning current won't be able to flow through it so by jumping the terminals uh, you're basically creating a path that allows current to flow through now if you jump it and leave the wire in there while it's running current's going to be consistently passing through there and what I'm getting to is the uh, cruise control system. So I think by wiring this switch in, it's gonna allow our cruise control to work because cruise control will work when there is no current passing through that little two connections, right? Does that make sense? When it's in neutral or park, there is current flowing and you don't really use cruise control in park or in neutral, right? You basically have to be in drive to use cruise control. So because when it's in drive, there's no current flowing through there, it will allow cruise control to work. Now, if you leave those two terminals jumped, there will be current flowing through it all of the time. And so it's, I want to say the cruise control module is going to think that it's still in neutral and it's not going to allow cruise control to work. So I think by having the switch in, when you have the clutch out, it's not going to have any current flowing between those two terminals, so it should get cruise control to work. I don't know if that's right. That is just my sort of train of thought on how the cruise control system sort of knows. So by having this switch in here, when you have the clutch out and the button is pressed and there's no current flowing, cruise control hopefully should work. I do like having cruise control, and so if it works after we wire this in, I'm going to be pretty hyped, I won't lie. So, I don't know though, I, don't, I haven't really looked at any wiring diagrams. Just from the research I've done, that's sort of what I understand it to be. I guess when we wire this up, uh, we'll figure that all out. That should be good for now. Alright, so we got our clutch switch. And the last thing we need to do to this is uh, cut a little plastic tab off here to make this guy fit in the, uh, the pedal housing. So on the brake pedal switch and the clutch pedal switch, they're basically the same, except for this brake switch has a little tab right here on the clutch switch it's on the other side and so it has a little cutout on that pedal assembly to make those guys fit in and they basically do that so you can't switch them or get them backwards from factory because this is on the wrong side it's not really going to fit in the way it sits now so we have to cut that little plastic tab off to make it fit so i got some wire cutters here and we're basically just going to clip that little tab off make them nice and flush and I got a little razor here, just so we can smooth them out a little bit more. There we go, that should do it. Alright, so last thing, I promise. Here is the actual clutch switch and here's the brake pedal switch. So what happened was I put the brake pedal switch in place and realized when the clutch is out it's actually not even pushing this all the way in, it's getting right there. 
So basically the throw on these guys, so they're going to sit flush, they're both going to sit like that. As you can tell, on the actual clutch switch, it sticks out a lot higher than the brake pedal switch does. And so the brake pedal switch goes from like here all the way down, the clutch pedal switch goes from all the way up top to like halfway down, right? So when the clutch switch is down, it's basically at the same level of the brake pedal switches. So well, basically we need to extend this to almost that height. So what I have is this little plastic piece right here. So this was the actual little cover inside the ECU that was covering uh, the EEPROM chip for the automatic transmission. So when we pulled this little chip out of the ECU, this guy was actually sitting right on top. And this is gonna be perfect. So I'm just going to cut this guy up into little squares and I have a hot glue gun here and we're basically going to hot glue some plastic on to extend it. So this is going to be a little bit ghetto, I won't lie, but it should work. And so I'm sure that there are some other things that you could use in place of this, but this is sort of a little bit resourceful. So we're going to sort of glue them on like that. Put some glue and glue these guys together. And that's pretty thick so that should actually be enough and I'm sure you could use something more solid than that to make it work but that's just sort of me being a little bit resourceful now we're gonna put some hot glue on top of that and we're gonna glue that guy right on the end of it there we go so now it's at the same height see that so now the clutch should be able to push that all the way in and make that switch actually work. So now we're gonna go install this in the car. All right, so basically now we're gonna make sure that it works. So this clutch switch is basically an on off switch. So when it's out like that, it's on. When it's in, it's off. So we're gonna test that real quick, put our key in. So I'm gonna leave the car in neutral. With it out like this, it should start. And with it in like that, we should have nothing. So now basically from here, we're going to run this through this little section right here and up under the pedal assembly. So so quick little crash course on pulling this guy off. There's a screw right here and there's another screw right here. Pull this guy back and sort of pull him out. And this front corner is going to go back in and then down. Okay. Then we're going to wiggle this whole thing forward, disconnect our light. Disconnect our little speakers, and this whole thing will come out. All right, so with this panel off, this panel is a little bit free to move and loose. So we're gonna take our clutch switch, and I'm gonna sort of feed him up through this little section here. There we go. And now I'm gonna run the wires behind this guy, just to sort of prevent him from getting squished between the trim pieces. I'm going to tape the wires to that little beam so we don't lose them. So now we're going to go up under and the clutch switch is going to go in into his little hole there. There we go. Now I'm going to go up and sort of secure this wire because it is a little bit longer than I need it to be. So I got some electrical tape here and I'm just sort of going to put the wire up, tuck it up in and sort of tape it off a little bit every couple of feet just to sort of keep it in its spot so it doesn't really drop down and get caught on anything when I'm driving. So I'm going to tape him off right here. You can also use something like a zip ties would probably do the job a little bit better. Now I'm not going to get too carried away with securing it because when I get the trim back under it's going to sort of push everything and hold it all up. So I'm not super worried. I'm just going to sort of secure off all of the extra wires sort of keep it all nice in place. And now we can put this guy back on. Now our lower trim can go back on. We will plug our speaker back in and our light back in. And he's going to go in. There we go. All right, so now from here, we're going to be basically putting these two wires together, jumping these guys. Um, so I'm going to be soldering mine like the reverse lights. Again, uh, you could just wrap it the wires in electrical tape once the connection is good and that should do it. So we're going to be jumping five, which is this guy right here, and seven. So on the back here, those are our two wires. So the green, green and white, green and gray it looks like, and then the, uh, the brown and black is the ones we're going to go after. So I'm going to cut the green one first. And like the reverse lights, I don't really think it matters which one goes where. And we are going to strip this guy. 
to slide my heat shrink over that one. We'll pop this guy off. Strip him too. Shrink wrap over that guy. Now I'm going to take both. Slide a bigger wrap over that guy. Let's wrap him. Get out of my face. Get a good mechanical connection. There we go. Let's get our heat shrink over that. Get some heat shrink on that guy. And now we'll go after this guy. So same exact deal. Let's get a good mechanical connection. Get our heat shrink on that guy. And now we are going to put our bigger shrink over both of those. Alright, there we go. We're all wired up. So as far as wiring goes, that is it. We're basically done. From here the clutch switch should work, our reverse light should work. From here we basically put the center console back together and then that'll be it. The whole manual swap will be done. Alright, so this is for you guys who are not going to be running a clutch switch if you don't want to deal with all that noise. This is basically how we're going to wire it together to make it all work. So we're going to pretend that the automatic transmission harness is right here. So you have like pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all that good stuff. This is basically going off of, um, if you guys watch the test drive video, we jumped uh, pin five and pin seven to get the car to start and run. And so if we pretend the automatic transmission harness is right here, we're gonna cut the wire for pin five, and then we're gonna cut the wire from pin seven. And basically what we're left up with is just two wires just chilling like that. So this is pin five and this is pin seven, if you guys can imagine that. So basically all we're gonna do is cut those guys together. So we're gonna strip the wire. So we strip the wire for pin number five and we're gonna strip the wire for pin number seven. All right, so there's pin five and there's the wire for pin seven. Now basically we're just gonna cross these guys, cross them and wrap it. And we're basically just jumping those two pins together outside of the harness. Now this will give it a better connection. You could just leave the jumper wire in there and just run it like that, but I would prefer to wrap it and solder it like this. I did this for my first swap and it worked out pretty well. So we're gonna take some electrical tape here and then we're gonna wrap it around that connection. And if you guys want to solder and heat shrink it, you would basically be doing that for right here, just connecting those two guys together. And so we're just gonna get them nice and wrapped. There we go. So we're basically just jumping pin five and pin seven, wrapping them together, and then electricity is gonna flow and it's gonna allow your car to start. And that's basically it. So if you guys aren't running a clutch switch, this is basically what we're gonna do. Just take pin five and pin seven, connect them together, wrap it, and call it, and it should work. So as far as wiring goes, that is it. We're basically done. So from here, we basically put the center console back together, and then that'll be it. The whole manual swap will be done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it fresh, and I will see you guys later. <laughs>